I have a big Lululemon haul for you guys, so let's start unboxing all this. You girls got an Amazon haul. I think it's gonna be good, but sometimes everything this is looks cool. Get ready with me, Romwe edition. Let's do an Amazon fashion haul. I spent $1,000 on shy. All right, this is everything I got in Amazon, and it's time for a spring break she haul. Let's see what Amazon fashion the fast fashion industry has undoubtedly increased in popularity since the introduction of TikTok hauls and paid influencers. But how did we get to the point of destroying the earth for the sake of views? And who's to blame? Let's go back to the beginning. Years ago, when you'd see something on a runway, you couldn't buy it, that trend, in a store for maybe like another year. And fast fashion, the whole concept of fast fashion was that it democratized fashion. Kathleen Weber is the chair of the journalism department at the College of New Jersey and has a background in fashion journalism. A lot of that changed in the early 90s because uh, there were trade agreements that were penned that allowed U.S. brands to manufacture overseas where labor was much cheaper. And so a lot of brands left the, this country where things were made. Um, most of our clothing two generations ago was made in the United States. And then suddenly there was a mass exodus of brands and clothing got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and the American consumer got very hooked on that. And do you guys know anything about fast fashion? A little bit, yeah, like the tiniest bit. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of like online like shopping. Like I have been looking at stores like Shein and stuff, which I know is like, you know, against the whole sustainability thing. And I agree with it. I really do not like Shein. So I've been tempted because some of this stuff is really cute, but I also like do not agree with all that like fast fashion like ideas. Um, so I'm trying to stay away. I've like watched one documentary about fast fashion and I just feel like the places I shop I usually don't or like aren't darn classified as that, but I'm not 100% sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess just out of ignorance, I haven't really thought about it too much, unfortunately. Like like Old Navy, I'm like generally like I like used to work there and they had like, oh like green initiatives and stuff, like it would be posted around the break room. But I don't really like, I don't actually like know like where their clothes are made. So I could see something on the runway and months later I could buy it at a very cheap price. It was very accessible to many people. And it was supposed to be a win-win proposition for the American consumer. And there were two things that happened. The consumer got really hooked on these cheap prices and having access to trendy clothing right after they had seen it on the runway. Brands were overproducing clothing um, and the people who were making the clothing were not paid a living wage and they still really aren't. When you're going to shop for a piece of clothing, what stores do you look for? Um, if I'm looking for something in specific, I'd go to like a store that I know I want to. Like if I want a t-shirt, I'd probably go to the van store. So usually I'll thrift. Um, I do a lot of like Target, Marshalls, that kind of stuff. Um, I hate the mall, so I don't go to the mall. Hollister, H&M, um, every now and then Primark, if I just need something really quickly and really cheaply. If I need something like just like a basic, like quick, like Old Navy or like H&M or something like that, but I try to like thrift when I can. I mean, I have been, been guilty of, you know, just running to the mall and, and grabbing something or buying something from Target under a time crunch, but I do try to um, find pieces that are used and, you know, have more of a story to them. I do look for, like, name recognition, and I feel like I'd like to go to, like, names I know just because it, like, is quicker and easier. And, well, there are, like, some, like, obvious, like, fast fashion brands that I'll avoid, like Shein or Romwe. If I'm in, like, the mall, like, with my siblings, I'll go into, like, Garage or Hollister just because, like, their names I recognize. And I, part of me does hope, too, just because it's, like, a higher price. It's a bit, like, better quality and, like, better practices, but without putting in the effort to actually, like, look into it. Kennedy Ferruccia is a senior journalism major at TCNJ with an internship at The Fashion Connection, a sustainable fashion company. But you don't realize uh, these products that you're buying are in like cardboard and plastic boxes that are just thrown away and not recycled and not 
being recycled correctly. Um, so I think that's the topic that people should also talk about. I try to check the materials more often because I know polyester is like recycled plastic so it's not as good material to use and stuff like cotton is better but I still like don't know exactly where that's harvested from or what work is going into making it. Uh, fast fashion is a huge polluter. Uh, the dyes that are in our clothing are being dumped into rivers, and that is a major public health uh, issue. And again, the, the workers aren't being paid. There has been another horrific incident at a garment factory in Bangladesh. An eight-story building collapsed today, killing at least 145 people and injuring hundreds of others. This just months after a fire killed more than 100 people and put the unsafe working conditions at many factories in the global spotlight. It was a huge world event where fast fashion was being made and 1,133 garment workers were crushed to death when the building collapsed. There's been a lot written about it and a lot of public awareness right after that event happened, but that was 10 years ago. It'll be 10 years ago, um, April 24th. And what's happening is brands go over to other countries and they pollute and they um, exploit workers and there's no penalty for that. I think there's a lot more awareness on this issue now. I think young people know a lot more about it than they had um, years ago. I think fast fashion has changed in a sense during COVID, and I think it has gotten worse since then just because people were home, like bored, so they were shopping online. And most of the places online were these Shein or Amazon and a bunch of other places that don't really make great clothing um, that are at a cheap price, and they obviously use like child labor and things that we really shouldn't support. Um, but I think that since thrifting and like secondhand clothing has become more popular, maybe in the last like two years, since people are going out more, they can thrift and they see a lot of influencers on let's say TikTok doing like thrift with me and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think people our age are influenced by a lot of things. So if they do see someone thrifting, they're gonna go do it. But at the same time, if they see someone buying from something from Shein or Amazon or like other websites, they're also gonna do that. So I think it mostly depends on what they're more influenced by. Where did you get your dress tonight? My dress is from an online boutique called Pink Lily. I found it on Instagram. Do you notice fashion on social media being like marketed towards you? Do you get influenced by that? Oh uh, yeah, 1000%. Like I get ads uh, all the time through like Instagram for like different companies. And not even like just cheap companies like Shein, but I get ads from like Reformation or like Madewell. Um, I usually just like scroll social media sometimes and like Sometimes I see someone and like a TikTok or something and I'm like, that looks hard, so I screenshot it <laughs> and, I'm, and I search it up later. So like sometimes I'll get TikToks if I like, like, like a outfit of the day or whatever. If I really like them, I'll save them and try and look for like similar pieces. Cider has been like the biggest advertisement that I've been getting. Like after every story on Instagram, it's a mm -hmm. cider advertisement. Me. As far as brands, I see a lot of Shein, like Shein hauls on TikTok and stuff like that all the time. And um, Fashion Nova on TikTok. Fashion Nova and is all pretty. that. Yeah. There are a lot of fashion influencers. There are a lot of um, social media influencers that aren't necessarily in the fashion community or doing it purely, you know, connected with fashion, but you know, you still see what they're wearing. And part of like what I do go to look at is like people who I like their sense of style. I try to see like when they recommend brands, I'll be like more, I'm more likely to like look into that brand. I think social media has been very negative um, in terms of promoting overconsumption, over shopping. Um, buying the latest trend, um, you know, wearing it on Instagram and never wearing it again. And I think they glorify these, you know, shopping halls. And so I think that's very, has been very negative. Um, the flip side of that coin is I, I'm finding more and more people are talking about sustainability on social media, especially on probably Instagram, and I find that to be a positive. I just don't know how we get young people to stop buying so much. These influencers are getting paid to kind of promote things. Um, like I know a lot of influencers have 
what is it called? Like the Amazon wishlist. Yes, the Amazon wish list. So they basically get a profit from people buying clothing that they put on there. So why would they not want to influence it to get a greater profit? But at the same time, it's supporting fast fashion industries and clothing that's really not going to last. Um, so I think if people had a better influence on things that would support the environment, it'll do a lot better. Um, but it tends to be that the items that do support the environment are more pricey. So especially people our age and Gen Z aren't going to buy a top necessarily that's like $40 if it's made from like greater fabrics when they rather just buy something that's like $10 and get shipped to them the next day. What are your thoughts on shopping secondhand? Uh, I like shopping secondhand because like you can always walk into the store and come out with something that you didn't plan on getting. I like shopping secondhand because sometimes you find some gems and it's always about the journey. It's really fun. If I can thrift something, I will, but I think it's harder with like when you're looking for something specific, like a grad dress, um, especially because like grad dresses tend to be white, and a lot of times, like with thrifted clothes, like it might be like discolored or stained. You can get a lot of things at secondhand stores too, like clothes, music, like a whole variety of things. I said coffee. I like maker. shopping secondhand because I find like cool stuff that I don't have in my closet already. Yeah. Because I always look for jackets that I don't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have like one of everything. They always have fun graphic tees. I've had a decent amount of luck with going into a thrift store and finding something at least similar to a specific item that I'm looking for. I'll just like do my shopping at thrift stores or whatever. It's balling on a budget. <laughs> There's been lots of discourse about reselling secondhand clothing and the ethics of it. Some argue that if people keep buying secondhand clothing to resell, there won't be enough clothing to go around. The reality is, while brands tend to be more secretive about the amount of waste they produce, it's estimated that 92 million tons of clothing end up in landfills globally every year. Kennedy is part of the thrift project at CCNJ, where she was recently site leader. Kennedy explains how reselling clothing has benefits all around. So we basically go to the homeless shelter in Trenton, it's called Rescue Mission, and we collect clothing from the thrift store. They have like loads and loads upon clothing in bins, so we collect them and we sell them at pop-up shops on campus. Um, all the proceeds do go back to Rescue Mission, obviously, because they sell their clothes for $2 a pound, so they're not really making a greater profit. Uh, so we normally sell the clothes for like regular thrift store prices, so they're getting more money in the end. Um, but even there, they get rid of a lot of clothing that doesn't sell. They have like bins upon bins in the back that they get rid of. Um, so by reselling them, I guess we are helping towards recycled clothing and lessening like textile waste because all the clothing just ends up in landfills and like hurts the environment even more, which is why it's so important to buy clothing that you know they'll keep for a long time. Where did you guys get your dresses from? I got my dress from Macy's. Oh my God, same, <laughs> Macy's! <laughs> yeah. With the government leaving the responsibility in the hands of the creators, the clothing companies running with that freedom and the consumers turning a blind eye, who's truly to blame for this global issue? And is it even right to push the blame all onto one party? I don't think the responsibility should be on the consumer. I think the consumer, I think knowledge is power. I don't think it's the consumer's problem, but I think that they contribute to the problem. Mm -hmm. And I think once the consumer knows what they're contributing to, I think sometimes that does help change their behavior. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's really the onus should be put on the brands. And right now we don't have any um, policy that says, if you're producing overseas, you know, you have to follow these uh, strict rules on production or the types of, um, you know, the fabrics that you use that are not sustainable. So I think that if we had more regulation, um, the brands would do the right thing. Right now, there's really no impetus for them to do the right thing. I guess the consumers also have a play in it because they do buy it, but there's also the fact that people influence the clothing that the consumers are buying. So I think there's a lot of roles in it, but if it changed from the very beginning, um, like the creators, I feel like we wouldn't have the issue in the first place. Um, fast fashion sucks, but sometimes it's inevitable, unfortunately, especially for college students. It really sucks, but um, I mean the whole industry, that's like, that's something you gotta tackle from the top. Like it's really nothing that 
we can do, unfortunately. Um, I mean, maybe there is. I don't know. <laughs> All of the information and advice surrounding sustainable clothing can be confusing, expensive, and overall a problem that not many people want to deal with in their daily lives. So, what is the next step from here? What can people do to make small differences in their lives without having to feel like the burden of environmental issues are their responsibility? We're still, you know, as a community, pushing for uh, change in policy so garment workers can be paid a living wage. So we um, are using uh, better fabrics that are not polluting rivers and that sort of thing. We want to hold brands accountable for what they're doing. If you are going to get rid of clothing, maybe try to donate it instead of... I, I don't, I've never thrown out clothing. I don't know if people actually do do that. Um, they do, which is not great. But just always try to donate your clothing, even if it's like just to like a church. I know my mom and I used to go through our clothing at least like once a year, just so we don't have so much, and just donate it to the church like up our street. Because people do need it, so it's... Better to donate things that you're not going to need rather than, than just throw it away. But definitely just not buying things you know is only going to be single use. I think especially in college, like, people have formals and, like, parties and things they just want, like, tops for and dresses for. But I wouldn't necessarily buy something just for one event. Maybe ask your friends to borrow something. So there's a bunch of things that you can do rather than just buying a cheap dress that you know you're never going to use again. Where did you get your dress for tonight? Um, my dress was thrifted by Cassie, uh, and it's an old Charlotte Russe dress. I went to Macy's with Josie and Mukta, so like Macy's or like I think Windsor, like those kind of dress places I'll look, but like if I can thrift and find a piece I like, like I will, or like borrow from someone. I did have a, I guess, fast fashion moment yesterday. So I had a formal to go to, but what I was going to wear had a stain on it that I couldn't get out. So I just went to Target and got new slacks. Oh my god. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm killing the environment. Fast Fetique. fashion is not good. But I don't like it. I don't shop at Shein anymore for that reason. I don't either. I made so. one, one purchase, then I read into it, and that was my first and last purchase. Brands need an excuse every season to get us to buy stuff, right? So that's why we have new colors and new trends and new hemlines. And I think that you don't need to shop all the time to buy the newest and the latest and to keep filling your closets with more stuff. I really want to encourage this generation to invest in good quality pieces and keep them for a long time in their wardrobes and then pass them down to people they love. And yeah, you know, it is a luxury item. I don't need people to buy 10 sweaters a year, but I, I want to encourage thinking about what you're consuming. Just Once we're done wearing it, you can sell it, you can give it to a friend. We want to keep it out of landfill because keeping it out of landfill is a, a better way to protect the environment. Things don't kind of magically go away when we throw them in the garbage. Um, and so I think we don't think about that as consumers, what happens at the end of a product's life. And I think we have to think about that. We, we wear clothing to express ourselves. I love clothing. Um, but I think there's a way to shop responsibly um, where we're not kind of um, creating, wreaking havoc on the environment and the people who are creating our clothes. I want to know that like the brands that I'm buying from, that they are paying their workers a living wage because the last thing I want is to wear a piece of clothing that has caused somebody a lot of misery. Before buying a piece of clothing, think about how much work was put into creating it versus how much use you'll realistically get out of it. Is it similar to something else you own? Do you have an older version that can be repaired instead of thrown out? Can it be bought secondhand? It might seem challenging at first, but in the long run, consuming less clothing will not only benefit your wallet and closet space, but the future of our planet.